On this edition of MSHA News, you'll hear a startling account of how a 3,400-ton slab of rock fell onto a ram car. Let's listen and see how the operator escapes this crushing roof fall. At that time, the only thing that I would have liked to have had a canopy for is we used to use burlap curtain back years ago. And running through the burlap curtain, you know, it'd get you muddy and slap you in the face and everything. But uh, that was the only time that I really thought I would like to have a canopy. I didn't think they were that important. We have had guys complain about the canopies being too low or whatever, but that type of thing, you know, is something that we just have to deal with. The, the canopy regulations, uh, of course, are not new. Uh, the canopy regulations were uh, phased in into the Federal Mine Act in the uh, early to mid-70s. Um, during that time period, we ran into quite a, quite a lot of opposition to canopies because it was a change to the uh, way normal mining practice was at the time. We have uh, seen several instances where canopies have saved miners' lives. This latest instance that took place at the Chautauqua mine is one of many that I have experienced and I, that I personally know about. Uh, and so we have become convinced in MSHA that canopies are an extremely valuable addition to the mining operation. It appeared that the, uh, there was uh, three gram cars really that were in the circle uh, waiting for give their chance to get out of the miner. Uh, one car had pulled out of the cross gut and was backing under the miner and these, car, these other two cars was parked uh, in this uh, two right entry and uh, they, haven't, they hadn't moved up yet so they was parked there and uh, this rock with no warning just uh, fell on this uh, particular this one car and trapped it completely and the other car just trapped it on the front end. I got in line with the right side shuttle car operators and was sitting there maybe five minutes. When I saw the couple of chips fall out of the top, Sam was behind me and I turned when I hollered back at Sam and told him to watch the roof because I saw it chip a couple of times and while I was looking back uh, I saw and heard the top crack and I reached to crank up my car and it happened so quick. The next thing I heard was just an unbelievable crash when the rock fell because it was just all at once because it was just one solid rock. And, uh, and the next thing I knew, the top had me pushed down in my shuttle car and the canopy was just right in my face and that's when I just started looking to try to find a way out. And that's when I, I had to roll my head and take my hat off to look back to see if Sam was okay. Of course, the rock pinned the uh, minor cable and the water hose on top of my battery on my, in front of my car, which you know, automatically knocked the power on the minor, but it busted the water hose. And the water hose was flooding down beside my car and uh, a couple of them said, wait, let's get the water off where they could hear me, which I found out later. They couldn't hear me because of the water. And uh, so as soon as I got the water off, then I was able to get out. I could hear them tell me it was clear to get out. At the time it happened, I was at, on the phone calling a pre-shift report out, and I, I heard a noise, and I lost power. My belt went off, and so I asked outside on the computer could they tell me what was wrong and the only thing they told me was the belt that my belt was the only one off by that time my right side minor operator and the right side ram car operator came running down the head and uh, they told me that i had an operator trapped in a ram car that he was okay but we had rock on top of it that we had to get it out at the time it fell in i uh, immediately started looking around for a way to get out because it happened so fast that I, you know, the first thing you could you think about is, you know, trying to get out. And uh, when I saw my way, when I saw that I had a way out between the rib and my ram car, I scooted out. And as we came around, Danny, the way the rock had failed, it left him a way, a passageway, out of his ram car, which he came out between the rib and the ram car. And it was, uh, it was just a blessing 
to see him, to know that he had, he had made it, you know, without a, without a scratch. And for myself also, uh, it's just a blessing from God that we both survived this. After looking at the car, I don't see how he got out, really. But he managed to squeeze out of the car, down by the rib, and get to safety. And the other guy, the other operator, Mr. Ard, he <clears throat> he got out of the car and was fortunate enough to be able to walk or run, but Mr. Terry had to crawl, slide on his belly to get out. Well, in the 30 years of my mining, <clears throat> I've never seen a rock shaped like that or that large in one piece. And uh, I've seen slips and cutters and rolls and horsebacks, but I've never seen a rock that had a slicking surface that came to a point and like this. It was just shaped like a battleship, and it just fell out in one chunk. The weight of this rock was estimated somewhere in the neighborhood of 3,400 to 3,500 tons. Uh, with that weight on top of the car, as you can see, the, the wheels are turned outward. Uh, it's quite apparent that the weight drove the frame of the car down to the foot wall. So the entire vehicle is now resting on the mine floor. But also point out that the batteries that were previously located here on the front of the vehicle have been removed by EPA requirements and is also for safety that we remove these batteries and get them out of the mine so they don't sit in here with a charge. If you'll notice back underneath, you'll see the top ridge of the canopy. The canopy has been depressed down against the top of the tires and a part of the frame. Danny Terry, who was the operator, was positioned back underneath. Danny had to escape out from the side and came directly out toward me to uh, escape from the uh, the fall. The best to describe this rock would be uh, if you've ever seen a canoe turned upside down this would be uh, a picture of this rock. It's it's about 85 foot long, it's about 12 feet wide at the base and approximately uh, 12 feet high. So this rock did not fall from rib to rib, it just fell right straight down the middle of the entry. You can tell by looking at the walls of this roof that this was a slick and slide rock and it was on both sides. Uh, this rock just fell out with no uh, warning whatsoever. They had been roof bolted. Uh, no one had uh, been concerned about it being an abnormal top. Uh, we have joints in the top and little rolls occasionally, but uh, it didn't appear to be anything abnormal. Uh, Jimmy had been through the area uh, previously during the shift. <clears throat> the roof bolters, of course, were in the area and they the one that takes care of the roof condition. So. They wasn't concerned about it because they'd been sitting under the same rock. So the boats were in it didn't have a chance. I don't really know why the rock stood as long as it did because it was there's nothing holding it. Uh, it. It fell out 10 or 12 feet high, and we normally don't ever set over six foot boats, so it wouldn't have held a, a six foot boat wouldn't have held it. This area was supported with three foot fully grouted resin boats. It was on five foot centers, and when this rock fall occurred, but there was just no way that this boat was going to hold this roof. It, it just pulled boat and all out of the out of the holes. The investigation revealed that this area was complied with as far as the roof control plan and, and boat spacing and all, and throughout the other parts of this section. After the rock fall, I was laying in the ram car waiting to get out. That did cross my mind. Of not being able to get out. I'm kind of, like I said, I didn't know how much more rock was going to fall, and I didn't know how much the canopy was going to hold. The canopy is uh, well designed. Uh, it's real strong. It's got a one-inch plate that it's mounted on. It's solid, uh, probably two and a half, two and a quarter inch bars, solid bars. It's mounted on the brackets and supports the probably a one-inch cover plate over the top, which it is enclosed the whole top of the uh, operator's compartment and it's well designed and it done its job and I'm very fortunate very fortunate it done its job and this rock is so large and tremendous in size that it managed to push the one inch plates that's mounted and molded around the car frame it just broke them down and broke the post over so 
If it hadn't been for the strength of the canopy, there wouldn't have been no out. It would have been a fatality. Canopies are the best thing in the world. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't want to run anything or work with anything without a canopy. The canopy saved his life. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Well, there's just no question to it. The canopy uh, saved his life, really. Uh, it's a good piece of equipment, a strong canopy, and uh, uh, it did its job. Uh, sometimes when they're not running or they're sitting, they're bad about putting their feet up and sticking them out from under the canopy. If Danny had had his feet out from under the canopy, he would have been caught, trapped. Uh, he couldn't have got out. Without canopies, uh, your life is definitely in, in danger with them. As we've seen and as I know, you can survive a roof fall. The canopy is all that saved in the good Lord Danny's life. Canopies are the, <clears throat> are the best thing that has happened to the coal industry. Even though they are aggravating, they're, uh, it's been a continuous fight, but they saved Danny's life. The canopies are a secondary line of defense where all, when all else fails and the, the roof falls in spite of proper examinations, in spite of being supported according to the way the roof control plan uh, says that it should, then canopies have proven over and over again that they indeed and it, uh, save miners' lives and are an extremely valuable part of the mining system. It took three to five minutes from the time the rock fell on my car for me to get out. But me sitting there waiting, not knowing if I could get out yet or not, and, uh, and maybe not being here with my family, I think I'm very fortunate to still be here. If I hadn't had a canopy, I wouldn't be here today. That's, that's a known fact. I was very much against canopies because they're so hard to get in and out of. But uh, I'm a firm believer in a canopy now. I wouldn't run anything without one. Life, a great reason to change. Canopies do save lives. Remember, when you're at your mine, Think of Danny when operating your mining equipment.